Hi, I'm Craig Regsager from Wood Magazine, and two of the best sources for getting hardwoods for your project are, number one, straight from the sawmill, where you probably get your best price per board foot. Um, our stuff that comes from the sawmill can be pretty rough on all four sides and may take a, a lot of work, but if you go to a lumber yard, some of that work's already been done for you. You get pieces that look a lot like this that have been planed on two faces so you can see the grain when you're selecting your boards. might have one uh, edge that's already somewhat straight for you. But uh, you're paying a little bit more for this than you would at the sawmill, but you can also see a little bit more of what you're getting. So there's that convenience. The problem is it's not ready to use in your project yet. These boards have probably not been fully dried. There's going to be a little twist in them, a little cup. The edges aren't quite uh, fully straight. So it's up to you and your shop to put in that little sweat equity and bring these boards from the lumber yard so they truly are straight, flat, and square. Number one is the jointer. On the jointer, you get one face flat and you bring an adjacent edge square to that face. You take that piece, you move on to the planer, and you bring the opposite face of what you've jointed uh, parallel to this face. So there's three sides done. Then you bring the piece to the table saw and you rip the fourth edge parallel to your jointed edge. Now that may sound like a lot to digest right now, but I'll walk you through each of these things step by step. Let's start at the jointer. Like I said, the jointer will get one face flat and then square up a matching edge. When you're on the jointer, you want to position the board so that if there's a cup to it, that cup is kind of rising like this so the board will ride on the two lowest points here. Now I'm sighting down this one and it looks like I've got a bit of a cup going this way. It's not real pronounced but it's just a bit of a cup this way so I'm going to joint the board like this so it rides on these two high points. Now another tip when you're jointing, check the grain on the edge of the board. You want that grain going down and here you can see it's sloping downhill. That'll prevent tear out. When you're joining, the technique is uh, very simple, but I'll just try to explain it as I go here. Start with pressure on the infeed side. At about this point, I'm transferring pressure to the outfeed side. You can see where the knives flatten the board here skipped this portion and then continued cutting here. On the second pass, you can hear where the knives stop cutting in the middle of the pass due to the cup in the board. Okay, I'm getting very close to uh, a full pass on the full width of this face. Here's one trick you can uh, use to make sure that you're actually getting a full pass on the full width of the face. Just take a pencil and scribble a mark down there. And when you get that full width pass on the joiner, that pencil mark will disappear. All right, look, there my pencil mark is gone all across that face. I know this one is nice and flat now. Now the next thing you can do here at the jointer is to make one edge perfectly square to this newly flattened face. To do that, we take that face we just jointed and it runs against the fence here. So a couple things I'm doing is keeping pressure against my flat face up against the, the fence while I move this across the beds. Here again you can see where the knives trimmed away the ends couldn't reach the middle, then resumed cutting on the end. I'll make another pencil line here just to track my progress. All right, there you can see my pencil line is gone. That edge is nice and clean. Now I know I have one face flat and one edge that's square to that face. Now to keep things straight, it's a good idea to mark these. There's a couple of traditional cabinet makers mark. It's just a little pigtail curly cue on the jointed flat face, and then a little arrow pointing to that pigtail on the edge that's square to it. Now sighting down this board, I can see that it's getting a distinct taper to it, which brings up a very good point about using a jointer and a planer. 
let me show you how much this uh, board is tapering. At this end, let's see, where are we? We're about 5 eighths of an inch thick there. This end, well, that's almost 7 eighths there. So this board is definitely tapered along its width, narrower there, thicker down here. Now you can use the jointer to flatten both faces of a board, but it's not necessarily going to make the board a consistent thickness. That's where the planer comes in. Over here on the planer, we've got a bed that feeds through here and the cutter head is above. So as the board feeds through, the flat face is riding here and the cutter head planes off this board to a consistent thickness. Okay, now this face has been planed perfectly flat. Now all I have to do is make another pass or two through the uh, planer to bring it to the thickness I want, which is a half inch in this case. So there's my completed board, uh, at least brought down to finished thickness right now. I started with this face here. This was flattened. This face, or this edge is square to this face. The opposite face is now parallel to this face, so I know that this edge and this face are also square. All that remains is to clean up this edge, and that can be done with a table saw. Now I can do one of a couple things here. I can either rip it to the finished width if I need it for a, a specific width on a, 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 an assembly, or I can just clean up a little bit of the edge, which is what I'm going to do here, taking off about a saw blade width, just to give me a clean edge. Of course, the edge that I squared up on the joiner goes against the rip fence, and I'll rip off that little bit of waste. So from one piece of somewhat rough sawn lumber, I've now got a prepared piece for my project.